so welcome back. Uh, today is actually going to be a uh, couple of firsts, not just necessarily for my uh, Lenovo X1. I'm going to do an upgrade, but in addition to that, this is actually the first video I'm shooting with my new microphone setup, which is the Rode Wireless Go. I actually just have it clipped on right now, but uh, that's what it looks like. There is a review that's going to be forthcoming when I have an opportunity on this. But yeah, really, I'm just checking it to see how it works. Now, clip it back to my shirt. And we can go ahead and get back to the review. So, today... Okay, still fiddling with this. Alright, so today what we're actually going to do is we're going to do the very first upgrade. There's probably not going to be very many upgrades with this particular device just because it is fairly new. But because there are some things I decided not to buy from Lenovo... I figured I can actually do on my own. Um, I will put up a couple of videos on what those things are. But what I decided to go with first was to upgrade the uh, hard drive. And really not necessarily upgrading the hard drive. I'm keeping the current hard drive that comes in the actual ThinkPad. But what I am doing is I'm adding a second one. And the main reason is whenever I bought this laptop, it actually offered the option to add an additional one terabyte uh, solid state or solid state uh, M2 form factor in NVMe uh, hard drive, but I thought that the price was ridiculous. As a matter of fact, I actually am on the uh, website right now just to see if the price possibly fluctuated, and it hasn't. If you wanted to add a second storage drive, it would cost you 750 bucks, which is insane. And in all actuality. To me, that's more expensive than probably one of the most, one of the fastest ones that you can buy, uh, which would be your Samsung Evo Pro 970. And that thing is still uh, only about, I believe Amazon has it for like three, or excuse me, 247 for one terabyte. And I would much rather have that than the one that they're trying to sell us on uh, Lenovo. So needless to say, decided not to do that. What I did decide to do was to source a drive, and it was actually based on a review I read on uh, A and Tech. Uh, I'll put up a link, and it was on the Silicon Power um, P34A, uh, let me see, it's a P34A80 SSD. So it's this device. And what I actually looked at was the benchmarks for it. And to me, considering the performance and the fact that I actually benchmarked the drive that came in here, this seems like it was actually really, really close performance-wise. Uh, in addition to that, the price had just dropped. So when I purchased it, it was about 134 bucks. It had dropped to 134.99, and actually it dropped again. So now it's down to 129.99. And frankly, with this drive being at this price, I can't even see why anyone would pick up the uh, new Western Digital Blues that are coming out that are basically offering less performance for around the same price. So this to me was a no-brainer. Read the review, like I said, I'll put up uh, some links and you can kind of see you know, what the reviewer said, but I thought it actually fit the bill perfectly. So getting back to, I'll put this to the side because once again, we'll be cracking that open and using it. Getting back to the laptop, one of the reasons why I love Lenovo in general is the ease of maintenance and upgradability. So the one thing I will tell you that I had to do that you will not see today, I did it beforehand. Uh, if you actually do get a newer Lenovo, you get the service manual, you have to download it, but they actually give you a couple of uh, suggestions if you do, have never done this before. These are things you should always do prior to, you know, digging into the laptop. And what they do is they have this uh, acronym, it's Customer Replaceable Unit, so things that you can upgrade. Uh, but there's a couple of procedures you do to prep it prior to getting in here. And what those things are, number one, everybody knows static electricity, make sure you discharge, do those types of things. But that's actually not what I'm talking about. What I'm actually referring to is disabling the built-in battery uh, and then also disabling your fast startup. Very, very simple to do. The fast startup, you're actually just gonna do it through your control panel and then you can actually restart the computer or shut the computer down. Really, in all actuality, you should just restart it because the next step, you actually have to go into the BIOS. So what ends up happening is you'll get the ThinkPad uh, logo and then you hit F1 to put you in the bio menu, BIOS menu, and then you can just go through and do the steps. Once again, it takes you maybe four or five minutes. And then once all that is finished, you have to wait about three to five minutes 
uh, just to let the computer cool down and you can dig into it. But I decided not to do all that on film, do it beforehand so this video wouldn't be too long. And this is a fairly simple upgrade. So the first thing you're gonna do is have to remove the bottom cover. Once again, this is Lenovo, really, really easy to do. And as a matter of fact, they made it so easy now that a lot of my Lenovo's, the screws actually come out. Well, in this one, the screws actually have washers on the other end that hold them in place. So you're not gonna lose a screw when you actually take the cover off. So you only have, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you have seven screws that you actually have to uh, loosen and here, and then it pops right off. And then once you uh, take it off, everything that you need <laughs> is jam packed inside. Um, I actually just love looking at the inside of this particular device because it is beautiful, if you ask me. Um, granted, I know my definition of beauty is probably completely different than most folks. But this is actually what it looks like. Uh, you can see you have your fan set up. Looks a little bit different than the T430 that you saw me open up uh, on my channel. But needless to say, everything is packed in here. It's very tight, but it looks really, really clean. I actually love how this thing is designed. They, they put so much stuff in here. You've got your fans. You've got your GPU. You've got your motherboard here. You also have, um, if you do decide that you want to upgrade your memory, that is like super easy. It's, it's actually literally like right here. There's a little flap that you can actually take it off. Right now, I believe this one has it. Yeah, this one is open because I, what I did is I expect it with just one 16 gigabytes of a DDR4. So it's going to be easy enough for me to come back in here and add another one. Uh, this is my M2 slot. So this is my hard drive that I currently have. This is the one that I spec from Lenovo. And then this, of course, is going to be where I'm going to be adding the uh, device today. So... Once again, everything is there for you to just go in and do whatever it is you want to do to it. Uh, and I really, really, really like that. I think that's pretty neat. So without further ado, the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to remove. OK, let me take this, put it down really quick. And you'll notice they have a little film here. We're actually going to take this out because that's where our drive is going to go. And then once that's gone, what we'll actually do, bear with me for one moment. I'm gonna grab the box here and take out our new drive. And once again, this is just gonna be my second drive. What I'm actually gonna use it for, I'll turn it this way, is the majority of my video footage or just footage in general my steals etc so this is what you're going to be calling a your scratch disc if you're not familiar with that terminology basically it's where you put the bulk of your footage and then all my programs and my operating systems um, you name it it's going to be loaded on this particular device right now i have everything on here so i will be transferring data to this device and just in case i didn't mention it this is a one terabyte uh, drive and then I actually have a 512 in here as well. So yeah, uh, will give me a lot of extra space to do things with. I have a lot of external drives, but it's nice to not to have to like carry those with me. And really that is about it. So what I'll do is jump right into upgrading the actual uh, system. And then once we do that, I'll give it, I'll boot it up. I'm probably not going to benchmark it on this video because once again, I don't want this video to be too long, but this is how it actually works. So what you want to do, granted, you're making sure that, you know, you've already, uh, you know, discharged any static or I should say, made sure you don't have any static. So you don't ruin anything in here to include the components that are there, but this is what it actually looks like. Uh, let me put it towards the camera, sorry. I'm trying to combat this light, uh, the, the reflection. Uh, very, very small. These things are extremely fast. So the way you do this is you actually place your drive and you orient it. So these pins, you actually have two different sets. But if you don't know how it goes in there, if you look on the motherboard, you'll see the pins where it actually matches up. Let me move this out of the way and I can kind of show you what I'm referring to. So... When you look on the motherboard, the motherboard actually shows you where it matches up. I'm going to tap this camera so I can focus really quick. There we go. 
and it's actually right let me turn this way here so yeah right there and it shows you you've got the the, the smaller pins which are going to be towards the top and then you're also going to have the ones that are a little smaller towards the bottom and then when you put the slot in you're basically going to put this in first and then you're going to actually screw the screw in so what we have to do first off is loosen the screw which i'm going to do right now because that's one part that i didn't do beforehand okay i'm gonna need a different screwdriver that's just awesome they wouldn't be the same size because that would just be too easy. So I've got a couple of different screwdrivers here. I'll try. There we go. So this is what you want to do. You want to take your screwdriver or your screw all the way out because this is going to make your life so much easier if you do it this way instead of trying to wiggle around it. Um, and then once you do that, now you're going to get your drive. Try not to touch it too much. And you're going to put your drive here. And it should slot right in. You shouldn't have to force it. And once you have it inside, it's going to stick out just a little bit. So bear with me. All right. So... You need to have it pivoted probably about 20 degrees, slot it in just like that, and then you're going to just put it back down. And once you do that, you'll fill it, right? There's no reason to ever have to force these things at all. If you do, you're doing something wrong. So now you're going to take your screw, and if you don't have, you know, screwdrivers like this, I highly recommend you buy them. It makes your life so much easier when it comes to installing your drive. And let me just make sure that everything that I need is correct. I'm pretty certain that it is, but because I'm paranoid, give me one second. I actually wanna check something. Okay. Mm, yep, okay. Okay, so let's do that one more time. Once again, put it at 20 degrees, and then you're going to press it so it goes forward, and then now you're just going to screw it back in. So let's do that. And I'll probably fast forward this on the video just so it's not taking too much time. Okay. So now that we have that back in there, this is actually what it's going to look like. I'll flip it up so you can see. Really easy, straightforward, uh, no problems. Once again, it slots into the same spot. I actually pulled this one up just to see if the... Uh, the blue, it looked almost like a silicone or something that was resting between the motherboard and the actual SSD was underneath the factory one. It was. So I put that one back down. What I noticed is it still kind of bows up a little bit, uh, which is really weird to me. So needless to say, when I fire it up, I'm going to check both discs just to make sure that everything is the way that it should be. So I'm going to throw this back on here. And there's tabs here, so this actually is pretty intuitive. Um, and then once you just get this placed back on here, all you have to do is just screw the screws back in. Oh, so one thing of interest, this, I needed the larger Phillips to do this versus the smaller one. Um, just kind of realized that whenever uh, I was trying to pull out the, uh, or put the SSD in, to the board it was uh definitely not necessarily working and you know i'm not going to strip the screw so it's easy enough for me to try a different phillips all right so this is where we're at keep going here 
probably fast forward this just to uh once again not to create or have a very long video on something like this because this is a really simple upgrade probably the easiest one you will ever see on my channel anyway um well I'll take that back because the next one will probably be the memory and that one's going to be fairly simple too so much so i probably won't even um put a video up on the installation i'll just put a video up on the uh actual um benchmark so here we go this is what it looks like well you don't see it yet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fire this thing up and then once it starts to boot up and it actually gets into my um oh haha <laughs> just thought about it you can't boot it up without um because the power was disabled in the BIOS, you actually have to plug it in in order for it to boot up. I remember reading that. So, that's funny because I totally would have forgot it. And right now, I've actually stepped away from my computer, so I'm curious to see if this mic does okay picking me up and I don't get cut out or anything like that. So when I review the footage, I can actually tell. So now, I've got the power cord. I'm plugging it in on this side. I'm actually plugging this into my workbench. Okay, so now I've got some power here. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug in Okay, so now that it's plugged in, what's going to end up happening is the BIOS is automatically going to recognize that power is attached. And so when I go to boot it up, it's going to re-enable those settings. So because I'm a little bit paranoid, I'm still going to check the BIOS just to see if it does what it says it's, it's supposed to do. And then I'll also check the drive to make sure that the actual drive is loaded so i know that even though i took out my factory uh drive that came loaded you get the glare off the screen it was reattached correctly because it booted up okay so now that i got that out of the way okay let me turn it this way there we go all right so i'm gonna wait here and All right, so there we go. Still booting up. It's on power. Uh, should hopefully recognize the other drive without me having to do very much. Worst case scenario, I may have to play around with it to get it to show up. Not really that big of a deal for me. My plan really was to go into the BIOS anyway. So hopefully it actually works the way it's supposed to work. But if you bear with me, I will find out. All right, so part two. Now what we're going to have to do is actually uh, partition this drive and initialize it for the most part. But you're going to create a simple volume. And the main reason why you're doing that is because unlike my other drives where normally what I'm doing is I'm swapping drives out and I'm moving everything over. This one, I'm keeping all of my windows as well as the boot files, everything that I need on the first drive. And I'm actually gonna put a new drive in that's just gonna be used to have space. Before I do this, however, what I'm actually gonna start doing is recording my screen. So then I can actually put up um, what I'm talking about for you as I step through it. So if you bear with me, this is actually what you're going to see or what I'm looking at right now. So needless to say, I'm stepping through and I'm seeing, uh, let me see, on disk management, this is what's going to show up. And really, if you need to get to this, all you really need to do is go to your uh, start menu, type in partition. And what's going to end up happening is your first search, you're going to get create and format hard drive. And you just select this and it's going to bring you here. So once I'm here, You'll notice I have disk zero and disk one. This is my existing drive. This is the one I just added. It has about 953.87 gigabytes, so it's roughly one terabyte. Right mouse click on that and actually do 
The only real selection that you have there is the new Simple Drive, which is going to pop up. It's going to walk you through. But needless to say, this is going to show you what your max space is, which is a little bit bigger than what it was actually showing me here. And they should just match, right? Because we're going to utilize all that space for this volume. Now we're going to have to assign a letter. So I already know that my C drive is basically being used, so I don't want to duplicate that. And what I'll actually do is I'll stick with D drive. I'm okay with that. And then select next here. And then once we get here, you want to make sure that you stick with your uh, NF NTFS, which is basically what you're running down here. Now, if you had FAT32 or 33, then yes, it should default to that because it needs to keep those two the same. You need to have the same file systems is what I should say. But no need to change that. My new volume, what I'm actually going to do is call it Scratch. A-D-C-H. And basically, I'm using it as a Scratch disk anyway. And I'm going to also perform a quick format because, once again, this is a brand new device. You want it to go through, remove anything that's there so you're starting fresh for the most part. And you wanted to do it fairly quickly. You know there's not any data or anything that's going to be on it. shouldn't be. I say that, and there have been vendors that have done things that, you know, to devices that where they actually hit, they ship with malware or you name it. But needless to say, we're going to do a quick format here. So I'll select next. This is going to give me all the parameters that I put in. I'm just going to verify that this is actually what I want. And then once I do that, I will actually give me one second really quick. I just want it to, okay, select finish. And now that I select finish, you'll notice that the status changed, right? You see that Windows has recognized that I have a new removable drive. It's actually located down here. And then now it's saying that it's been partitioned and it's healthy and it's online. The way to verify this is now you can go back into your Windows Explorer. Because the funny thing is, when I first started doing this, totally forgot. Once again, this is new, so it's a little bit different. Um, I'm at a new second drive is what I should say. But I went to the device manager first, and I did see it in the device manager because I know this was my old one, and then this was the new one. Granted, it wasn't showing up in File Explorer. But now, since I've added it, you will see that it actually is. And therefore, I can use it. it tells me, if I right-click on properties, I've already used about 169, 169 megabytes. I have 953 left. So really, that concludes it. Um, Pretty easy to do. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, what I'll also do is benchmark the performance of this. I'm not going to do it with this video. I'll do it with a different video. So once again, if you have any questions, comments, thank you. And uh, Agent Fitz signing out.